the wind blows on the soft petals near the stream where the bikes ride along mountaintops where roly papers fall in the hurricane. God. What's a haiku again? I think it's this really big company that's been around for a long time and you know it's had a, a big role in the evolution of, of mountain biking specifically um, and then when you get to know them and you get inside you realize that it's actually quite a quite a small operation with um, just a lot of really cool unique people if it's love, then come on, give this love a ball. there's a lot of Kona fans out there we mostly hear anecdotes, you know, you'll hear about someone who lives on the island and they have 15 Konas in their garage, going back 20 years. A lot of people have forgotten that we started in Vancouver, and that's where Dan and I met. We met at the West Point Bike Shop. Uh, he's an American from St. Louis, and U.S. being the biggest consumer market, you have to address that market by being located in the United States. And what has happened over the years is that the center of Kona has moved down here into the Bellingham area for a number of reasons. Some of them are really practical. It's affordable to live in Bellingham. There's great mountain biking. It's a great family neighborhood. Clean air, wide open trails, wide open roads. Everything that Vancouver has, but toned down. Living in Bellingham's been really cool. I came from a small town in Wisconsin, and moving here, the sense of community is really reminiscent of a small town. Everywhere I go, I know somebody. Um, I know people that I see on the trail. The sense of community is just like, it's really cohesive and strong, especially within the cycling community. It's really unique. It's a special place. It's not your world, so-called world-class city. It's a small town, and that suits our style. This is obviously our biggest operation. You can see this is a pretty big, big building for a little company like Kona. But again, it's Whatcom County and the land here is cheap and the cost of living is easy and it's just a great quality of life. Cycling culture has always been very fascinating to me and it's, it's very honest. You know, it's not like, uh, like car culture or other businesses that, you know, the business, the interior workings of the business itself become a key piece in who the business is. Like, you know, oh, we need to have a nice office and it's got to be fancy and, you know, we wear suits. Kona's got a pretty laid back culture. When we go biking, we like, you know, that's when we're free. That's when we're the goofballs we, we can't be maybe when we're in our day-to-day -day jobs. You know, that's when we're swearing and yelling and crashing and rolling in the mud. And that kind of that character really rolls quite beautifully into, into the uh, underside of, of Kona. Up work in the morning and up at the crack of dawn All my money worries wherever I go come along Worries a bully that just won't let me be Trying to keep me busy, tussling and struggling We had this level of sophistication so that people kind of understood that, yeah, we can make really good bikes, but then we needed to keep that reverence somewhat. So um, keeping that balance is, has been an interesting challenge. In order for a little company like Kona to get noticed, we had to do things that were a little bit more outrageous. That included some of the ad advertisements we came out with. We had uh, some names that were perhaps a little bit out there. Uh, there were the suspension experience bikes that we called Sex 1, 2, and 3. 
There were the tires that we called scratch and sniff, and we had the ad with the with the lady scratching under her her chin and then sniffing it. And we had the ad where the French women's mountain bike champion was going through a, a stream and the tag was, are you wet? If you don't have the product to really back it up, you can't really be super irreverent. It's easy to be irreverent when your bikes are selling like hotcakes, but then all of a sudden technology gets involved and you know people have got these super complex suspension systems. The stock answer we give is that all the good names were taken like LX 1130 and we have to take all the crappy names like Stinky and Mooney Mula and uh, other names like that that didn't really make sense. Trying to keep me busy, tussling and struggling. No home since the fire, me and the ass can settle down. You know, people want to buy stuff from companies that believe in what they believe in. And if you're just telling them how rad your stuff is, you're not telling them what you believe in. And if you believe in having fun, and if you believe in like, you know, poking the man every once in a while, and if you believe just in cycling culture without having to have, you know, your bikes all over it or your, your brand all in it, then you start to articulate to people like, okay, well, this is a company that has the same kind of value sets that I do. Tussling and struggling, still always remembering when the going gets tough. A lot of people out there with better ideas in every single category, and of course, that was the other thing going from one category in mountain bikes, which were rigid hardtails, uh, fully rigid hardtails, um, to 15 different kinds of mountain bikes. You have to apply a deep focus to every single bike if you want it to be commercially successful. As simple as a bicycle is, the bicycle itself has almost become as complex as the rider. Oh, well, cheers, eh, beauty? That's a good ride. We get up there to the top, eh? I think, you know, what Kona has done over the years is it's, it's injected fun into, into cycling and made sure it stayed there. We've had some great staff people and still have been able to hunt, hang on to them for a long time, which I think is unusual in the bike business because there's a lot of people that bounce around from place to place, but uh, I think that is a testament to, you know, how deeply everybody cares about bikes and about making great Kona bikes. Kona, in its evolution, has become a lot bigger than Dan and I ever imagined it would be. A lot of us say it's like the the smallest, biggest company, bicycle company in the world. Right now. It would be really sad if Kona didn't exist in my mind. I think it's played a massive role in the culture of mountain biking and cycling in general. From the outside and, and from the style, it's uh, pretty casual and I think it reflects more of what business is these days. It's not as hard-nosed, it's not as nasty, uh, especially that's true in the bike industry. People are friendly, they love bikes. So how can you be unhappy if you're surrounded by the things you love? Ha, 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 ha.